TK9, the new version of Tony Kuiper's Luminosity Mask plugin for Photoshop just came out. So I wanted to do a short overview video of some of my favorite new stuff. To provide a complete look at every feature in TK9, I created a seven hour course called the TK9 Button by Button Guide. And there's a link in the description if you'd like to learn more about that. While TK9 brings us new masks, new modules, new features, new interfaces, and new actions, TK8 users will appreciate that the interface and all the features that carry over from TK8 still look and function the same, and that makes your transition to TK9 effortless. Like TK8, the TK9 multi-mask module makes it fast and user-friendly to generate, customize, and output an unlimited number of pixel value masks, including luminosity masks, zone masks, color masks, saturation masks, and edge masks. The combo module continues to provide convenient and intuitive access to the Photoshop features that photographers use the most. Most Photoshop functions are buried in menus, submenus, panel menus, and keyboard shortcuts. It takes a lot of time to get to them, even for experienced Photoshop users who know where they are. The combo module puts them in button mode right out in your workspace where you can access them easily without being distracted from your creative process. And many of the features in the combo module run complex procedures, saving you countless mouse clicks and lots of time. But now let's look at some of the new stuff. There are more new additions to TK9 than I have time to point out in this video, but let me show you at least a few of my favorites. First of all, there are two new mask making options, Blend If Masks and Focus Masks. Blend If Masks are great for people who like using Blend If layer style controls, but also would like to utilize Blend If settings in ways traditionally limited to masks only, such as loading them as selections, saving them as a channel, or combining them with other masks using mask calculations. The Blend If Mask submodule translates the Blend If settings into a luminosity mask preview, which can then be modified and output like any other mask. And for those of us who have always found Photoshop's Blend If controls confusing or hard to use, there's also a new Edit Blend If feature that allows you to make regular Blend If blend settings on any layer with this user-friendly interface. The sliders visually make much more sense than the sliders in Photoshop's Blend If, and there are presets for one-click Blend If settings, so you don't even need to use the sliders at all if you don't want to. There are also much better controls for using the color channel blend options that are otherwise almost impossible to figure out in Photoshop. You can also save your own custom blend if settings as blend if presets, and this enables you to reuse them on any image. The other new mask interface in TK9 is for focus mask, which actually includes two different types of focus mask options. The first is focus range masks. These create masks that target parts of the image that are most in focus. Focus range masks are great for adding contrast or brightness or saturation to the sharpest areas of an image, or for darkening or decreasing contrast and saturation in parts of the image that aren't quite as sharp. The second type of focus mask this button can make are focus depth masks. These masks target areas of the image based on how close or far from the camera they are. Focus depth masks allow you to make adjustments for things like brightness, contrast, color, and saturation to parts of the image that are either closer in the frame or further away. They can also be used to add focus blur based on distance, so you can add or increase soft focus in the foreground or background of images. I also love the new features added to the TK color grading tool. Photoshop doesn't have an easy to use color grading tool like Lightroom and Camera Raw do, but the TK9 multi-mask module provides us that interface in Photoshop and also allows us to do color grading maneuvers that you can't do in Lightroom or Camera Raw, such as color grading the sky and the landscape separately, 
or color grading highlights with one color theme and shadows with a different color theme. New to the TK9 color grading tool is the color grade sampling button, which allows you to sample colors from the image itself, but you can also sample colors from other images to create a color grade, or sample from a painting, or even sample from a frame from a movie. Another new thing I love in color grading are color grade presets. These allow you to save your favorite color grade settings, instantly apply them to any other image, and compare color grades to each other to see which one you like best on an image. The export module is an entirely new module in TK9. This is something that saves me hours of time, so I absolutely love it. It works like the web sharpening feature in the combo module, but with a lot of added functionality. In addition to sizing, sharpening, and watermarking images for the web, it can batch process entire folders of images. It can transform and crop your web images to fit specific aspect ratios. And you can save an unlimited number of export presets. And that's a quick overview of just my favorite new features in TK9, but there are many more, such as being able to back up and restore your personal TK9 settings, new actions inspired by Nick Page, as well as guided frequency separation actions. It has improved and expanded my action modules that make using your own Photoshop actions much easier, and it has improved functionality in many of the other features. So I hope you enjoyed this quick look at my favorite new stuff in the TK9 plugin. Stay tuned for upcoming videos with useful TK9 tips and techniques, and also make sure to follow David Kelly's TK Friday videos on his channel. Thanks always for tuning in, and I look forward to seeing you again soon.